thanks for joining me once again. Just uh, glad to be back, excited about uh, this episode. Uh, it's the month of May. The month of May is recognized as uh, Mental Awareness Month. And I don't want to come across insensitive. I'm going to say some things that might be frank uh, or objective as far as I see it. But it could be offensive, and I, I don't want to come across that way. There are those who are dealing with uh, severe challenges, and they have certain diagnoses. So then the doctors have made observations, and they feel like they have it. And if you, that's you, um, I'm praying that the Lord will encourage you during this time. But I do want to respond, I think, in as much fairness as I can biblically because the Word of God is the, the ultimate authority, not the way we feel or what the doctor's diagnosis may be. So Dr. MacArthur did make a statement during this time, and it was a Q&A, and I really haven't listened. I didn't listen to the whole thing because I think the context is important because sometimes clippings can be really, really tricky. But he did say certain diagnosed conditions, diagnosed conditions, uh, I use air quotes, certain diagnosed conditions um, are not real, such as ADHD, for example. And that produced a variety of responses because ADHD is known as a mental condition. So I just finished reading a book by Dr. Ed Welch. Uh, it's called Blame It on the Brain. I think it's a question mark in the book. Uh, an excellent book, but it was released in 1998, so it is a bit dated. But I would say that his theological convictions are still strong. I, I agree with so much of what he said. The research part is dated, and I, and I get that. But as I read the book, I'm wondering if the research changes anything because the Word of God is going to always stand the test of time. I would think that the research only continues to corroborate what he's saying. And I, I would say that the research also corroborates and supports what Dr. MacArthur is saying. Whenever you're talking about the brain, and I'm not an expert here as a degree, but I've done some research, some studying. I've been studying the body, health, and all those things because I, I had a, a condition, and that condition was affecting, guess what, my brain, my neurological responses. I didn't have, a, it wasn't a mental illness. Uh, it was triggered by something else. It, it was there's always a root cause, but Dr. Wells said that in the 1800s the church was normally recognized as the go-to liaison for certain conditions. And you know how to deal with it, how to get counsel through it. But the church got really sloppy with this diagnosis. It says, well, this particular disease, I think, it was uh, cholera uh, back in 1832 around that time. Uh, it, it's a result of sin, and that's why it's there. Uh, it, it didn't deal with a root cause and. And so the church began to lose its, I think, strength as science so-called advanced. That, he said, is a probably a part of when uh, Christians and the Bible was no longer the go-to resource to deal with these issues. And, and that probably, I think, is, is true. Now, fast forward in our time, and it's still a similar issue where even Christians, I, I think, are capitulating to the, the culture, to science, um, to a fault, as opposed to testing all things using the Word of God. And I think, too, using just the evidence, right, empirical evidence. Uh, a, a quick example is, uh, you know, during COVID. During COVID, you know, whether, whether it was Dr. Fauci or uh, Deborah, I think Hicks is her name, or Dix. Or <laughs> I'm not trying to butcher her name. I think it's Deborah Hicks. But anyway, she was in Washington, too, and they were not accurate with their assessment. Uh, they, they were not consistent with their assessment. They pushed the vaccine. Now, the vaccine has seemed to cause all kinds of issues and, uh, and problems. And there are a lot of young people dying, a lot of young athletes dying. They're 40 years old, 50 years old, no one's saying anything. You know, they, they said, get the vax, 90% safe. Uh, you got to, you know, get the booster. And then it went from 90% to, to 60%, 50%, 40%, 30%. Now, we don't know what the percentage is right now. Just lie upon lie, deception upon deception, and to realize that it was a multi-billion dollar hike. Um, so then you have in the, the department of health, you, you have special interest people who are actually on the board in some of these pharmaceutical companies. And, and this was found out during COVID. So we have sufficient information to lead us to, to conclude that, that, uh, the health officials are not necessarily interested in our health, but they may be interested in their own bottom line. The same is true for the ph pharmaceutical companies. Now I am a pastor. I'm a preacher of the word of God, but I'm not dumb. Um, I'm not I'm not ignorant. 
Uh, I have been studying good health because I'm trying to live a responsible life in this world. Uh, I have been doing my best to take care of my body because it's the temple of the Lord. I don't idolize it. I do go to the gym a few days a week uh, to, to, to keep myself in shape. Uh, I don't want to stand before the congregation. As a Dr. Um, Martin said in his book, Pastoral Theology, with stuff hanging over my belt, um, I, I believe that the pastor should be disciplined in all of his life. Um, you, you name it, he exercises discipline over the plate, where he goes, what he does, how he sleeps. Um, he's not glued to the television. He's not glued to the bed. He's not glued to the, the table. He's not glued to the plate. He's not glued to the dessert. Uh, he lives a disciplined life. So I've been studying ways to live a disciplined life, and, and I would argue this. I would say that, and, and just give me a moment, Christian, dear brother, sister Christian, I would argue that the Christian should be more insightful when it comes to their health and their body than the world. I believe that the children of the kingdom should be a little bit more wiser than the children of this generation because God made the body. God also made the brain. Now, one of the issues that we uh, see in is that there's a, a relationship between the belly or the gut, as they would call it, and the brain. And so certain foods can trigger reactions, certain things that we eat can trigger certain reactions. But a part of the problem is, is that we have silenced our body. We, we've basically killed it. Uh, there's certain things that we eat that, that it's toxic. And the toxicity basically just slowly kills the body's ability to, to communicate. And so there, there are no signals and impulses going from the gut to the brain to say, hey, man, this, this food isn't working. But as the more healthier you are, is the more effective your body responds to certain foods. So, oh, I ate this. I didn't feel as energetic. I ate this. I felt really great. Just, just, just eating certain foods, and if your body's in good health, it can actually give you a cue as to whether or not these foods are good. But Christians, and not everyone, but we tend to consume what we ought not to, and everything the doctor says we do. Uh, we are busy downing chemicals as opposed to eating the natural foods that God gave to us for nourishment and for good health. And, and, and I, for one, uh, do not think pastors uh, should, should be lagging when it comes to, to health unless God fix the body. We, we should take care of our health. We should walk. Uh, we, we should do more standing more studying than sitting. Uh, we should exercise. We should be in relatively good shape. We, we're not here to compete uh, in, in Mr. Olympia without question. Uh, and we're not here to, to wear tight shirts because we're built, as one pastor did, and he looked awful because he was displaying his body. Uh, he was idolizing himself, and he was a, a gross distraction, even though he was in shape. You know, we, we should care for our bodies. We should take care of our bodies. We should rest well, eat well. Uh, we should love in Christ and love others greatly and be an example to the body of Christ of men of prayer, men of the word, and men who exercise discipline in their lives. I think when that happens, there's a better um, awareness of the body and the mind. So Dr. Welch made a, a profound statement. He said this. He said that, that uh, the brain is not an excuse for sin, but it may reveal issues of the heart. So the brain is never an excuse for us to say, well, the, I, I was high on drugs and my brain was whacked, so I killed this person. Um, I, I went mentally AWOL, and that's why I did. We can never blame the, blame the brain for sin. The, the issues of weakness just reveals areas of deficiency, and that is sinfulness in our heart. For example, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and he did allude to this passage, he says, Therefore we do not lose heart, but though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. So the issue is not mental health and all those things. It, those are secularized terms. The issue is whatever struggles you may have, those struggles are never excuses for you to commit sin. But the weakness of the body is the only way to unmask the fact that there are unmortified sins in our heart. Take, for example, uh, someone who is suffering with dementia and Alzheimer's, and I'm not being comical here in this topic, it's just an illustration. When the, the, the brain's capacity uh, to restrain itself from certain things diminishes, then they tend to say wild stuff and do wild things. Why is that so? It's because they suppress those thoughts in their minds when they had the mental capacity to do so. But they were not renewing their inner man day by day by mortifying those sins. And so what happens is they lose that, that, that first layer of defense. Uh, well, the unsanctified parts, the unmortified parts are revealed. The parts that did not die daily are revealed. And that's really what happens. That the weakness of the mind, if you want to use that, uh, its capacity, it loses its capacity to reason well and to process things well. 
uh, will reveal certain issues of the heart. On the flip side, there have been those who mortify those sins and had songs of praise in their mind, certain uh, passages that they rehearse. And when they have dementia, guess what happens? They remember the hymns, they remember those passages. What comes to them is the thing that they dwelt on the most. So the, 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 the mental part of it, air quotes, is, is not the reason why we sin. It has to do with our heart. Now, on a more broader scale, there there's some things that we can do, and, and we, we have to recognize that, that the Word of God is not against medicine. But there is, I think, a tendency to overuse medication, uh, to depend on it too much. Instead of looking for natural remedies, we instantly go to what's over the counter or what is prescribed. But uh, do we weigh and evaluate what we should do? And once again, I'm just reasoning as Christians, and we should be wise. We should apply godly wisdom to every facet of life. And, and to me, this is a wisdom thing. The doctor said I needed this. Doctor said I needed that. Okay, I'm, I'm not against doctors, but they're practicing. I hope you know that. You know your body better than they do. And then the, 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 the medical field divides the body up into several parts, and they have specialists. I prefer holistic doctors because they deal with the whole man. So what, what, whatever happens in the gut affects the brain. As one doctor says, the gut and the brain are interconnected. So if a problem in the gut is in the brain, the problem in the brain, look in the gut. And a number of people can do themselves a great service if they actually ate more responsibly. Because certain foods actually help uh, to, uh, to, to revive the brain, as it were, to, to feed a certain nutrients to it, to, to help it, to, to re-stimulate certain parts of the brain again. And then certain foods can actually block it, as to why dementia, they are saying now, is a form of diabetes. Therefore, certain foods, and not saying that, there are no genetic issues in the body that may affect it, but food, what we eat, which is called a metabolic issue, is the larger problem that is contributing to our health. And cancer, for example, most, if not most cancers are metabolic. It's not hereditary. Like they will ask you, well, you know, did your parents have cancer and grandparents? Did it run in the family? And what runs in the family is not cancer, but food. It's eating the same foods, the same poor food choices that actually leads to certain uh, poor results because it affects the body's cell. Uh, you say, well, you're not a doctor. No, once again, I study. I, I want to be um, whole in my understanding of the spirit man, but also the physical man. Uh, I don't glory in my physical man, but I'm not going to abuse it because when God created the body, he said it was good. So to, to, to harm the body and to have it look all distorted and contorted is not a biblical principle at all. That's why I argue that, that men of the word and Christian men ought to consider a caring well for their bodies, but more so their spirit men, right? Bodily exercise profits a little bit. Spiritual exercise not only has profit for this life, but the life to come. And so one is more certain, significant than the other, but you don't ignore one to do the other. You do both. Once again, the outer man is perishing. The inward man is being renewed, renewed day by day. There are certain things we can do dietary-wise to help the brain recover. Then another issue too is this. There's certain mental conditions that are attributed to um, to war, for example. Uh, you have this this trauma from the war. That's 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 a real phenomenon. Some people have physical brain damage. Uh, others are, are physically challenged mentally uh, because their their brain is not fully developed. Those are real situations. But in all of those circumstances, even those who are handicapped mentally, they still can respond to the Word of God. They can still hear the teachings of the Word of God. They can still hear the great narratives of the Scripture, and they can still believe in God and be saved because a perishing out of man doesn't mean that the spirit man cannot be regenerated and renewed in sanctification. So as Christians, we have to have that balance and understanding there. And once again, Another, I think, critical component to this is that we've got to distinguish between the real issues of the mind that is spiritual, that affects us physically, and then the physical challenges that expose spiritual deficiencies. That the, the, the essence of the man is, what's, is his soul. And then this, the soul of this person, his heart, um, his emotion, uh, the inner being is really uh, the most impactful part of him. And, and, and that is a part that is able to overcome even deficiencies in the brain and the body. Then on just to the point of the, the mental awareness, it, at the end of the day, it just seems to be a money-making scheme. And I will always encourage believers, find a faithful, holistic doctor. Find one who loves the Lord, not one of those 
wacky ones, but find one who loves the Lord, but, but deals with the whole body. That will provide uh, remedies and, and actually will do a thorough test on the body, blood panels to help you to see. I think Christians should explore all of those things. I don't think being over-medicated helps. And, and look, if, if you think you're saving money in one area, but you're spending or your, your insurance company is spending thousands and thousands of dollars for your medication and, and for your help, you are not being a good steward either way. It's still a waste of money. But if there's a way to discipline your life in good eating and good diet to cut down to that expense, you're still eating poorly, spending a lot of money eating, right? And, and then you sp- y- your insurance company has to spend more money on your health. That's not good stewardship at all. And, and I think that's something to consider. I, I am an advocate of the Christian learning everything they can about the body without idolizing it, but taking good care of it, eating well, eating right. Uh, the foods in America are overly processed. They're not healthy for us. Uh, they're not good for us. And some will say, well, you know, you you seem to be uh, just an extreme. No, I'm not. I'm actually really moderate. I just have a balanced understanding of life. Um, and, and it comes from my knowledge of God. The more I know about God and creation is the more it takes me back uh, to the, w- the way we should live. Not some exclusive kind of like reclusive life. That's not what I'm saying. But to live responsibly to eat responsibly, to drink responsibly. I'm not saying drink responsibly by drinking beer. I don't drink alcohol. But you know what I mean? Not over-consuming on what I, whether I eat or drink, doing it all to the glory of God. And the more we learn about certain foods and foods that may help and may harm us, is, is we, are, we are required to be good stewards over that now, over that knowledge. And, and that's what I'm encouraging, to learn those things. Um, obesity is a problem in society, and that, that affects us mentally. Um, stress is a problem. Well, we do certain things, certain foods actually add to the stress, and certain foods actually contribute to depression. So it's not just, it's not just um, the environment around us, but it's what's happening in the heart. Once again, although the outer man is perishing, and so is the outer world around us, the inward man is still being renewed day by day. The renewing of the inner man, combined, I think, with healthy, responsible eating, um, will contribute to, I think, a healthy society. And I believe that the church should be the catalyst behind that. Okay, I surrender. I, I give up. I, you caught me. I, I, I probably sounded more like um, a health expert than a preacher. I get it, but I, I am confident, though, that if you search the matter carefully, you realize that stewardship over the body is important. Paul says, I buffet my body. I discipline it. Discipline. Put the cookie down. Put the cake down. Put it away. Sometimes you could you can think about eating one meal a day, which often I do. I eat one meal a day, and I'm good to go for the next 23 hours. Discipline the body. Did it take some time? Yeah, it took about three years, but it's a great feeling. I just had one meal today, and the energy is there. The strength is there. The mind is clear. It's a beautiful thing when you eat healthy. I, I want God's people to think about those things, and I, I would say this, that I'm not saying this is going to be the case for everyone, but I, I, I am convinced because it did help me because I did have some physical problems that actually affected me mentally. That if we eat right and we feast on the word of God in prayer and we get the proper rest, that, that we will be much better off as a society in, in a holistic way. And, and that will cut down, I think, on a lot of the issues we see around us with, with quote, mental health and all those things. Um, uh, one example is this. There were several families, and uh, this has been documented and proven, who would switch their, their children's diet um, to a, a ketogenic diet, which is a low-carb, uh, high-fat moderate protein, and their kids were autistic, and they saw the dramatic change in their children's mental uh, capacity just by changing the way that they eat. God created foods, and he created all things good, many six minute devices. Much of your food has been monopolized or manipulated so that they can monopolize on it to make more money. They take all the nutrients out, and they split the nutrients up into small portions, or they'll take it out of the milk and try to put it back in the milk, which that doesn't work. So the milk you drink is nothing but white chalk. That's digestible white chalk in fluid form. It's not the richest of the raw milk. These are the things that's happening that's making us unhealthy. Okay, I surrender again. I know, I, yes, I said I was done. I, I get it. You're right. Uh, y- you should come at me with some very loving responses in uh, your comment section, in the comment section. All right, may the Lord's grace and peace be with you. Thanks for listening again. Oh,